Welcome back. You're watching Sunday edition here on KTN News. In the next one hour, we'll talk about the state of the race. The, that is the presidential race. But with a bit more focus on the opposition coalition, the National Super Alliance, which this weekend held its first joint political rally in Bomet, being hosted by uh, the Bomet governor, Isaac Ruto. A lot of, uh, it, there was a lot of pomp and color, of course, uh, a lot of headlines saying that uh, NASA has landed in the home turf of Jubilee. Uh, I want us to take the next few minutes and uh, take a look at some of the utterances that were made, analyze some of the speeches, and then take a look at what the impact of that and, uh, in, 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 in the light of the quest for unity going into the elections and their pursuit of a flag bearer for the National Super Alliance. Let's start with the court leader, Raila Odinga, who spoke in Bomed yesterday. Yemen court leader Raila Odinga, they're speaking in Bomet, in NASA's first joint political rally. Uh, among other things it, it did speak about was he trying to speak to the people of the Rift Valley, uh, basically the, the grain basket of this country, telling them that the tea farmers have been uh, you know, suffering under the Jubilee administration, the uh, fertilizers are bad quality, uh, that is why they have been getting bad yields. You know, trying to speak to them. How, what is your analysis of Raila Odinga's energy and message in Bomet yesterday? At his age, Raila is extremely energetic. In fact, I doubt if Ruto will be like that at right 20 years from now. If you look that Raila is basically uh, in the air every day of the week, he is to me, uh, a representation of political commitment and enjoyment. Now, my worry about, for example, what he said, he said what is wrong with the Jubilee. He didn't say what he would do to correct the things that Jubilee is not getting right. For example, I didn't hear him say, if I was to be in charge, there will be no stealing of public funds, all right? There will be no false promises, we'll meet our obligations, yes. and so forth. Mm -hmm. To me, he has spent too much time uh, um, um, uh, cataloging mm -hmm. what is wrong with Jubilee. Right. I would like to hear him, like in that meeting, it would have been politically productive if he had been able to say, uh, this group that you see here is a new group that has a new platform for doing things differently from Jubilee, then he outlines two or three of his major programs. The other thing that I want to make in relation um, to that meeting, to me, it would really have meant much more, all right, uh, if Gideon Moy was there. If he had been there, it would begin saying, Moy is allied to NASA. Now, I don't know whether it is timing. I don't know whether it is the uh, backroom discussions that are going on that don't allow him to appear this time. But if, he had, if it had been there, then he would say the, the formation of NASA is taking shape. Nick Salat tends to be there often, and uh, once he comes out, he speaks 
from the other side of the mouth. So you don't really know. My suspicion is that there is an element of political trickery All right. going on. <clears throat> so, but the key thing here is that if I listen even uh, beyond what Raila Odinga said, even the others were not really offering alternatives. All right. What's your analysis of his speech? Well, when you listen to that speech, Raila, uh, in my view, he wanted to achieve uh, two things mm -hmm. by telling people that NASA is uh, a reality. Even his branding was all about uh, NASA. And for the last couple of months, everybody has been uh, wondering whether or not NASA is actually going to be a reality. When um, Salim Davad came up with the idea of uh, NASA, people said that uh, this is uh, a normal cartoon and he's just uh, dreaming in the air. So by going with all the, maybe for lack of a better name, you may refer to them as the four principles to so that one meeting. And on the invitation of uh, Governor Isaac Ruto, that was telling people that really we are here to play ball. And this is our special purpose vehicle. And we have to look at uh, the invitation into greater detail. Who is uh, Governor Isaac Ruto? Governor Isaac Ruto, in fact, is the person who created the deputy president. If you recall the Mao issue, he's the first person who told Mr. Rail Odinga, the way you are managing the Mao issue is unacceptable to the members of this our community. And uh, the deputy president, being a clever man, he used it as a, stemming, as a stepping stone to the national limelight. And for, the, for Governor Ruto to invite the NASA leaders to his home turf and get that kind of a crowd, whether or not they were given some incentive to come. Because we know most of these crowds, they don't come on their own motion. But in my view, even if you give uh, the entire crowd some money to come, that was a really big number. And the people they were addressing are members of the Kipsigis nation, which considers itself to be the elite of the, of the Kalenjin nation. And you know, they spoke in uh, very serious terms, black and white. There were even um, prayers. You recall last time when I were going to the last election, the Jubilee duo, the president and his deputy, mm -hmm. said they were doing prayer rallies around the nation. All right. And these guys started with uh, prayers. So I think they were creating an emotional connection. And then number two, the, the, the prime minister, the former prime minister, was trying to establish his track record of reliability by telling people that wherever I tell you anything is going to happen, it comes to pass. He, he spoke about corruption and he went into NYS. Right. And I think he was trying to remind the people in Rift Valley that in as much as you're supposed to be enjoying food security, supplying food to the entire nation, part of the reason why you're not doing this is about uh, corruption. But I would like to agree with the professor that now it's uh, time for them to change the message. Because right. if they want to kick Jubilee out of office and they're not giving us a, a solid replacement, a, a very good proposition, then people will not take them seriously. All right. Jared, what do you think about uh, Raila Odinga's performance yesterday, his speech, uh, his uh, energy? What do you think about that in just uh, one minute? Jared, Jared, if you can hear us, uh, please just take one minute only. What is your analysis of Rai Laudinga's speech yesterday in Bomet? Thank you, Ben. Uh, I'm sorry I got disconnected, so I've, uh, I've missed a bit of the discussion. But, I, uh, you know, the Prime Minister Rai Laudinga is buoyed by several reasons. One is that he's backtracking to his formula of 2007 when he marshaled troops behind him and managed to clinch the presidency. We are forgetting about what happened in the year 2002 when the opposition united under common cause to see the exit of President Moi together with his uh, uh, imposter uh, uh, at the time, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta. Uh, so what we have seen Raila Odinga doing is to bring people on board people who can help him consolidate various regions. Because at the end of the day, politics is about numbers. And if he marshal enough troops behind him, and as you commonly know, politics everywhere is local. And if you have people who then represent the interest of those local commoners, then you have a working formula. Just as somebody said in your studio uh, today, that Jubilee is just about Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto. Far beyond that, you have nobody. But Raila Odinga is trying to create a position where you would have people represented from various regions, those who will then go down to the grassroots to mobilize voters in favor of NASA so that they can clinch presidency this year. And as he has already consistently said, this is not going to be a one-man show as we see in Jubilee. This is going to be a show of everybody. As the America's new president did say, that power is being taken back to the people. That is the direction Raila Odinga would want to take together this NASA brigade ban. Trying to recreate what happened in 2000, 
And two, let's now uh, listen to one man who was on the other side, that is, uh, that is Musale Mudavadi, the, the leader of the Amani National Congress, who, of course, uh, uh, NASA is his brainchild, speaking yesterday in Bomex. Uhuru Naruto inji imewashinda. Wanatembea kusema tunamipango, tumetenga, tutafanya, tuko na budget, sijui tuko na nini, alafu sasa munaona wanakimbia kila mahali kuzindua miradi ya poroja. Kule kwangu bungoma, raizu uhuru hamezindua barabara moja kwa miaka miwili iliyopita safari tatu. Na haijaanza. Na fikiri atarudi tena kuizindua zafari ya ine. Davadi, but of course that is the senator of Bungoma, the leader of minority in the Senate, um, Moses Otangulo, also so the party leader of Ford Kenya, another uh, among the four of them who want to be uh, the flag bearer of the National Super Alliance in the next few weeks. Uh, how, how, how was this message? I mean, all of them are trying to get or to, uh, you know, tell Kenyans that they are the man for the job to have, uh, you know, that ticket. As, as we said earlier, they are, they, are, they are spending, as I said earlier, they're spending a lot of time in pointing out the ills of uh, Jubilee. But they have done that for the last uh, two, three years. As I said, it's important for them to shift. But the critical thing that I think is extremely important from that meeting mm -hmm. is that people turned up in large numbers, which means, which means that there is some confidence in that uh, right. in that. But what team. about Wetangula? Now, Wetangula, <laughs> in my opinion, was making an important point that the, the Jubilee government has spent time making promises and promises they are not delivering. Now. There is something else I wanted to say, just as a background to what we are discussing. You know, Raila is, an, is a big team builder, all right? But he's not able to keep the team. They, you know, if you look at uh, 2002, 2007, 2013, he builds teams. He managed to assemble teams. Now, my observation is that if he can manage to keep that team going beyond the campaign, beyond the campaign, because uh, he has one big problem. Whereas he's very skilled in building the team, the operatives he keeps around him do not allow the team players right. to be mm. effective. So it's become one of the weakest points that needs to be dealt with. This must now, usually talks about him, his bombers being able to be picked away. Mm -hmm. This must. <laughs> this must. Yes. Moses Utangula, many have described him as, as being, uh, in terms of his presidential ambitions, as, as have described his presidential ambitions as being premature. Mm -hmm. What do you, what is, what do you, what is your think? What is your take on Wetangula, especially yesterday? No, no. If somebody says that Wetangula's ambition are premature, I think uh, that's uh, been unfair to him. He's uh, been uh, in uh, the cabinet for a long time. He's been a nominated MP for a long time, and at his age, I think he's approaching 60. He's got the necessary skills to run the nation. So, if he declares his uh, presidential interest, I, I don't think it's appropriate for somebody to say that uh, he's immature. But his presence in the meeting yesterday is important for two reasons. Number one, in the entire NASA formation, he's come up uh, lately. He was behaving like a reluctant bride. He was, uh, I think, he's the last person to endorse NASA, obviously because of Musalia Mdavadi. Because you recall that uh, in the initial conversations that said to Musalia Mdavadi, if you want to be part of this team, yes. please come and join CODE. All right. And uh, Wetangula had his uh, foot soldier saying that when you come to CODE, you're going to be fourth in the queue. There are, there are three people already in CODE, you're going to be fourth in the queue. And you recall after their meeting, uh, the NASA meeting at Bomas, he did a media conference the following day and said that we are alive to the fact that there's something called NASA, but we don't have a structured engagement with that, without right. NASA. So he seemed like a reluctant, but his, um, his speech yesterday is a very strong indication that uh, he's uh, in NASA, the way Salat said in Dani Kabisa, 
Right. And number two, you can see there is a, a common denominator, the message from uh, Raila Odinga and Moses Wetangula about uh, development. Right. Because all of them are saying that a Jubilee is launching all manner of uh, funny projects. Right. So, and one see that they've got a strategy, they've yes. agreed in a room somewhere that this is the message you are going to be delivering. So the message is uh, trying to punch holes into the development uh, mm -hmm. agenda of the Jubilee administration. And let's now, remember you can join this conversation, you can call us live and, uh, with your questions or comments about what we are discussing. We are discussing the NASA first joint political rally in Bomet. That is, of course, yes. And let's talk to uh, one of our viewers uh, who's calling us from here in Nairobi. I think this is Solomon. Solomon, good morning. Solomon, can you hear me? Stephen, Stephen, we are Stephen calling us from right here in Nairobi. Stephen, can you hear us? Seem to be having a problem with the lines. Let's go to Jared Okello. Jared, your party leader, Moses Wetangula, uh, spoke passionately about, of course, his bid for the presidency. Of course, the four of them are uh, trying to make their cases uh, to, to, to their supporters. What is your take on his speech in Bomet yesterday? Well, thank you, Ben. Uh, I think the clarion call uh, and that is what CORD and NASA will be coalescing around going forward as they sell their manifesto to the public is about corruption that has bedeviled Jubilee admi Jubilee's administration and inclusivity. That is why uh, the Prime Minister Raila Odinga is reaching out to everybody uh, who can then be part of this process. Yesterday you saw the coming of the new presidential uh, aspirant, uh, the new kid in the block of the presidential aspirants, uh, Philip Murgor. Uh, it is a testament that, you know, Cod struck NASA's main mandate is to reach out to everybody who has what it takes so that they firstly create a national face and at the same time ensure that when they get to create government, the next government, and I'm using the word when very deliberately, then they will have to incorporate everybody on board as opposed to the exclusive or exclusivity approach that Jubilee has employed into the new, this regime. Uh, uh, Moses, Wetangula. Yes, Moses Wetangula did speak about you know, the, 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 the rallying call trying to reach out and punching holes on Jubilee's administration. As, as it is up to now, NASA does not have a presidential candidate, and therefore everybody becomes an equal partner in this. And as they move forward with the committee that was crafted uh, early, the, early in the week, they are trying to look at what is the best formula in terms of the ticket that will quickly clinch uh, the uh, presidency. Uh, ben, I uh, do know that uh, as we move forward, the message will just be about corruption and inclusivity into the new regime. More, Morris calling us from Kangemi here in Nairobi. Morris, good morning. Good morning, morning, morning. Sir, yes, sir. What is your comment or question? Yeah, my question is also, my comment is that. Yes, go ahead. My comment is that. Yes. You. All right. Uh, if you can try to um, put the TV off, sir. We can't uh, get you. Your line is not clear because of the TV set. Maurice? Okay. okay. Yes. All right. That is Maurice uh, from Kangami. He's trying to hear himself on the TV set. In relation to, to, to Wetangula. Yes. There is an important message he was delivering. Mm -hmm. He was telling the Bomet, the Kipsigis nation, that you are not the only ones who have been getting empty promises. We have been having plenty of them. So when you look at these people, uh, every time they come, they promise you something new, despite the fact that the time is finished. So we in Western province are, as a block, telling you that you are not the only ones who have gotten a raw deal, but we are together in this. All right. Secondly, the fact that he appeared in that meeting in the same platform with Musalia, together with the others, is sending a message that the Western vote is together. And don't forget in Western, Bungoma and Vihiga, and uh, you know Kakamega was represented by right. Aluale right. and, and the governor, 
clearly what they are, the message they're delivering right. is that Western is it's also together, together with All right, That is, of course, something that has not happened. Western Kenya has never voted together since 2002, of course, when it was under the leadership of the late Kijana Omala. Let's now talk about the other gentleman whose entry into the opposition politics, the National Super Alliance, has complicated matters a bit for Moses Butangul, and that is the Amani National Congress leader, Osalia Mudavadi. Let's listen to him yesterday in Bomet. NASA ni Kenya, na wa Kenya ni NASA. NASA ni Kenya, na wa Kenya ni NASA. Jambo la tatu, munase kura ili tupate ushindi. Kwa hivyo huo ndio ujume wangu siku ya leo, na tutapata na fasi tuongee tena, kwa sababu tunataka ushindi kutoa serikali ya jubli ambaye inapenda kusumbua watu. Ebu tuseme NASA! NASA! This must, NASA is finally a reality. It was his brainchild, Musalia um, Mudavadi. What would be going through his mind in terms of his chances mm -hmm. for the well, tickets? Well, first of all, when you look at NASA and the way Musalia Mudavadi uh, started it, by referring to it as uh, the big tent philosophy, so that I said this is a big tent and everybody is going to have room. It doesn't matter which political party you are coming from. And uh, that's why it's becoming a very good idea. And like uh, Jubilee, which is now one room and everybody has been forced in, that's why you see somebody like Lemmy Muiria and uh, Lenny Kivitu trying to, I mean, looking for accommodation elsewhere in uh, Mandeleo Chap Chap. Now, for Mselem Mdavadi, is the probability of being the NASA flag bearer is going to be determined by the voter registration. If at the end of the, by 14th, you've got a huge block of lawyers who've already registered, and he's able to convince his colleagues that uh, he can actually bring together the entire lawyer vote. And if, if uh, Wetangula can agree to play ball, to be given another position, maybe speaker or a majority leader at the National Assembly, then it stands a very high chance. Looking at the statistics without a deep analysis, give, just uh, giving a, a casual view, and I know Professor would probably take offense because he wants facts <laughs> very with the precision, but if you have Musalia Mdavadi as the NASA presidential candidate, and then he comes together with, he, he comes home with the Luya vote, that will uh, immediately neutralize President Kenyatta's uh, central Kenya vote. And uh, if now the, if Rail Odinga would actually accept the fact that the probability of him becoming a president is extremely, you know, it's a, a tall order because the way the system uh, has uh, conspired, and then he endorses uh, Msalia and Kalonzo as a ticket, then I think Jubilee will have uh, a bit of a, a challenge. All right. but, but again, this is the big question, whether or not you can actually transfer the Raila vote to any other person. Because people say that uh, in 202, Raila was able to transfer his vote to Mwai Kibaki. But then, you know, that scenario was a bit different because we had two Kikuyu candidates, Mwai Kibaki and uh, Uru Kenyatta then. So I think that's the discussion ongoing. But when you look at... Um, when you look at Musalia Mdavadi today, he's the kind of leader that everybody in Kenya would, have, would be happy to have at a state house because he looks calm, collected, and he doesn't have uh, political enemies. Uh, unlike, uh, unlike Ray Lodinga, right. if, if you mention the name Ray Lodinga in central Kenya, people for no reason, they'll begin having running stomachs. All right. Joseph from Dagoret here in Nairobi is calling us. Joseph, good morning. What do you think about all this? Hello. Yes. Okay, Good morning. Can you hear us? What is your take on all on our discussion this morning? Okay, my take is. All right, we seem to be having a problem with all our callers this morning. Of course, uh, let's try to rectify that and try to get back to Joseph from Dagoretti. Uh, I would Musali like. To, I would like to say something. You know, politically, Musali has matured. He's his own man. He's able to leverage. Or first of all, on ideas. Two, if he can um, broaden the political base by making himself acceptable in uh, Bukusuland, in Bungoma. Uh, in other words, if the Kuras that uh, Wetangula brings mm -hmm. and other leaders from Bungoma, and they can get together, it clearly means that he then, with his maturity, he is able to convince these other people that let's now vote as a block. Now, the advantage he brings also is that he's uh, mean. Uh, when you look at him, he does not seem to threaten anybody. He's, he's sort of, um, he's a gentleman, he's a man able to use information effectively, and he's able uh, to persuade. Now, 
What has been a problem with him in the past is that he's made uh, is his political judgment. He's made political decisions at certain times that have led him to look like a man of a weak spine. Now, but if you look at the fact that they have also addressed joint meetings with Wetangula in Western Province, mm -hmm. there is a, a deliberate effort to uh, galvanize the overall Luya vote. Because if you put together the, the, the Kakamega vote and the, the, um, the Bungoma vote and the Vihiga vote, that's huge. Yes. As Mokua said, if you get the, that vote plus the other vote that Modavadi collected elsewhere outside the Western in province in, in 2013, yes. it means that uh, he has ripened. And in my view, um, NASA no longer has only one likely candidate in Raila Odinga. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the enemies that Raila Odinga has got out there, they are huge. They will be a minus. But Mudavadi, in the middle of right. this, would be, is much more acceptable, um, is much more balanced. And you would say, for the time being, uh, uh, unless certain things, a certain vagaries come into play, he would be um, the man to negotiate with, Ogin, with the Raila so that he's able to block transfer. Don't you think that ticket would have too much Western Kenya? Raila is from Nyanza, West, uh, Musa Mudavid is from Western. They call themselves Chemejis. That ticket wouldn't it alienate the rest of the country? First of all, Eastern Kenya, for first of all, uh, there is something that I don't like very much, but I would agree that if you put Musalia Mudavadi and the Kalonzo Musioka, you've got a formidable arrangement. Right. In my view, that combination is a much more sellable combination than Raila Musioka. That has been tested, yes. and uh, it has had, it has done well, but All it's right. got its challenges. If, if, yes, yes, yes. If, if I may just betray that point about Musalia Mudavadi. If you want to know how he's likely to lead the nation, look at uh, his appointments even before they start the negotiations proper on who is going to be the candidate. When he was given the opportunity to name people to that technical committee, he appointed Kipruto Arab Kirwa, Captain Yare, and a gentleman called uh, Sakwa Bunyasi from uh, Western Kenya. And like his other colleagues who decided to go, like for instance Moses Wetangula, mm. he decided to get uh, Eseli Simiu, Kalwale, and uh, Wamalwa, people from the same village to that committee. But it seems to me that um, Salem David is uh, acting presidential by saying that in, in as much as Amalu have been given this opportunity, let me get a Somali man who is his deputy party leader, let me get Kipruta uh, Arab Kirwa so that he can concentrate and uh, consolidate the Nandi vote, and let me get this gentleman Sakwa from uh, Busia. So those are really good signs of uh, a leader. All right. Jared, Jared uh, a lot of talk about uh, Musali Amudavadi and, and, and Moses Wetangula. Do you think the unity of, of the Western voting bloc will depend a lot on the two maybe talking and agreeing and maybe one stepping down for the other? Well, Ben, firstly, at a mundane level, we would agree that uh, the Prime Minister, Raila Odinga, has a very soft spot for Musale Mudavadi, politically speaking. You remember in 2002, when he was lied to by the Uhuru Kenyatta team, and uh, he decamped at the very last minute after the formation of LDP that joined ranks with NAC to form National Rainbow Coalition. Uh, later on, Raila got down to the dustbin, uh, brought him out, dusted, dusted him off, and you know, made him his deputy in 2007. And you remember that, that that is the ticket that won the election that hands orchestrated violence after Kibaki Brigade chose to stay in power, regardless. So again, in 2013, he chose to go a different direction after the Madimoni saga. And later on, Raila Ding again reached out to him and uh, has been brought back to the fold. So you can only say that you know the prime minister has a very soft spot for him. They are very good friends, and they share a lot in, a lot in common, uh, politically speaking. Uh, suffice to say, we do know that Western Kenya has never voted as a bloc. They always drift apart. You have Bukusus on the Bungoma side and Transoya always pulling towards a different direction as those from their Kakamega counterparts. 
This is going to be the very first time, and I pray NASA holds, that Luya will rally behind one common cause, one presidential candidate, and one agenda. Now, that unity, as you can see, between uh, Moses Wetangula and Musale Mudavadi has already sh uh, shoved everybody by the wayside. You no longer hear about the Eugene Wamalos of this world. You no longer hear people like uh, Lusaka. You no longer hear voices that were dissenting to, to the common cause espoused in, uh, in, NAS uh, in NASA or in CODE. So I think that kind of unity is going to rally uh, the entire Western Kenya to NASA's uh, fold and NASA's basket. And I think it then presents a formidable force to face Jubilee. They're going to reach out to other regions that are perceived to be leaning towards Jubilee. And that is why there is a serious onslaught coming up uh, in the South Rift. And many other regions are going to be considered in this. So uh, it's a good marriage between the two. Uh, we only pray and hold uh, and hope that uh, they hold uh, to the very last minute, Ben. I agree with Jared about, uh, about the likes of uh, Governor Lusaka not being popular anymore, but that's a discussion for another day. Yeah. Prof, you have something yes, to say? Yes, I, I, the, in, um, in uh, history of political succession and continuity, an observation has been made that Raila has a soft spot for Musalia, and probably Musalia has a soft spot for Raila. Now, in terms of selecting a candidate going forward, one would expect because Musalia is a very close friend and political ally of Raila. Raila should be much more comfortable to say Musalia Tosha. Because to me, it would give him much greater mileage. And then from the point of view of political animosity, he would be assured that if Musalia gets to power, he would be quote unquote politically secure. All right? That would be an important point. Another observation arising from that meeting that really impressed me is the lively, liveliness of the crowd. The crowd was absolutely responsive, All right. which means that there is a certain amount of um, uh, connectivity mm -hmm. between the leadership on the stage yes. and the crowd and the at that people. particular this point. Must, there has been some history between Musala Mudawadi and Raila Odinga. In 2013, Musala Mudawadi you know, left mm -hmm. in a half you know, saying that, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm never going to win this fair and square. Raila Odinga thinks he's the only one to, supposed to be on the... On the how, where does that place the, the, the chemistry and the trust between the two of them? Now, it would be naive for us to imagine that the four NASA principals we saw yesterday love each other intimately, <laughs> that they like each other, they miss each other, they pass roses to each other. They are political enemies, as it were. But I think what has done unto them is that uh, they're in a, a sinking ship. And they know for a fact that if they do not come together, then they're going to be given a thorough beating by uh, Jubilee. And the fear is that uh, if uh, Jubilee wins uh, August, then all of them are going to be relegated to a dustbin in history. They're going to be footnotes in uh, when you are doing, when you're reading history, there'll be chapters in history books. Because if Jubilee wins, then nobody in Kenya is ever going to manage William Samoy Ruto. Samuel Ruto is going to become a giant in the political space, and there's a genuine fear for them that uh, when you approach uh, 2022, you'll have so many governors who will have uh, emerged, people like uh, Alfred Mutua, if he, if, he, if he wins, Kidero, if he's given Next the Nairobi t-shirt here. Yeah. There'll be so many people, and you'll have about 10 strong governors with a very good track record of success who can actually go to the presidential race. And that's the reason why they're trying to stop this. Right. So for, for Ray Lodinga, when he looks at all those... Uh, when he looks at his uh, colleagues, he knows the one who has got a very high chance of uh, capturing the presidency and securing his uh, political future is um, Salim Mdavadi. Because Raila Odinga doesn't love anybody and he doesn't hate anybody. For him, he's just looking at the numbers. So when he looks at Salim Mdavadi, he's asking himself one question. Can Musalem Mdavadi manage to come with all these numbers? And if he becomes a, a, a president, is he the kind of guy who can guarantee uh, me a very good... Uh, sunset days. Yes. And when you look at all those, the only person I think he believes in almost 100% is Musalia Mdavadi. Because when you look at uh, Wetangula and when you look at uh, Kalonzo, you're not very sure whether these are the people that you can actually trust with your sunset speaking, days. Speaking of Kalonzo Musioka, the Waipa Democratic Movement leader, let's listen to him, what he had to say in Bomet yesterday. Of course, 
He was the running mate, uh, Raila Odinga's running mate in the 2013 presidential race. He is also seeking to be the flag bearer or to be on the ticket in this year's general election. Let's listen to him. Dugwaisa Kruto, Mimi Nakupa Heko, Endelea Namnahio, Tunganisha Kenya He, William Bavio, Kenya He, Naitaji, Biwe, Kilam Kabila, Nasio Kabila Moja. Now we know. Wakati watu wa Jubilee wanafanya maajabu yao. They don't involve the people of the Rift Valley. Bonde la Ufa kutoka Turkana mpaka Kajiado. Ni inji nzima. Na nyinyi ndiyo tegemeo letu kwa upande wa chakula. Mukiwa na njaa mkamba naanza kuhara na kelekea nyumbani kwa sababu mambo yameharibika. Kwa hivyo bei ya chakula, bei ya mahindi, ahadi zote hizi tutaziangalia chini ya National Super Alliance. Kalonzo Musioka, the Waipa leader there, of course, again speaking about, uh, speaking to the people of the South Rift. Uh, what's, your, what's your take out from that? Um, uh, you say that Kalonzo Musioka and Mudavadi appeals to you like you a see, winning ticket. For me, whether you put Kalonzo first or Mudavadi first will depend on how the, the political dynamics play out. Both of them. You see, we look at Kalonzo Musioka. In government, he has been virtually everything in public service except the president. Now, all these years, uh, he has matured, he has metamorphosed from being uh, um, uh, a chameleon to being himself. And if you look very carefully, he is now talking authoritatively, definitively, and on very specific issues. So as far as I'm concerned, and you know Kalonzo Musioka, the temperament is good. The temperament is very good. He's non-threatening. Mm -hmm. And also, he is knowledgeable. Yes. He would be a great asset, particularly in building bridges internationally in terms of global reach. All right. Now, if you look at uh, the numbers, he also has numbers. You see, that this NASA Super Alliance, we'll be talking about the Western vote, the Nyanza vote, but the eastern, lower eastern vote is critical to that uh, NASA survival. Because Kalonzo, you know, right now, when you look at his backyard, uh, Mutua may be there trying to build a, a platform to go places. But if you look at Mutua can actually be neutralized by Ngilu out on the ground. Uh, Kalonzo has an edge over everybody else in, in Cumberland. And there are many people who have described Kalonzo in negative terms. Personally, I feel that whatever faults he may have, like every, each one of them, he has matured to a level that he's the only one, when he speaks, I can tell you, there are two people, when they speak, you get a feeling of patriotism, mm -hmm. Kalonzo and Raila. That obsession with the fact that we have a good country, yes. we have good people, why don't we protect it? This must, as NASA, continue with their joint rallies, where does Kalonzo fit on this, uh, in this equation? Uh, Kalonzo is a, a very key asset in uh, NASA. Because when you look at the body language, to me it seems like he's the weakest link. He's the person that really needs to be now sending those late night text messages or um, Salim Davadi to persuade him to stay within uh, NASA. Because uh, not long ago he complained that he's found himself in a territory that he's not familiar with. Because all his uh, life, from the time he was uh, 27 years, he's been running around in a GK car. And I suspect he's never had to buy fuel. So the first time he bought fuel is after they lost the election. So he, find him, he found himself in a shock and he's missing that warmth. That's why not long ago again indicated that whatever it takes is going to be in government. And if you look at the, the messages they delivered yesterday, the common denominator is that it doesn't matter who among us is going to be the presidential candidate or is going to be the running mate. And I think for them, their appetite to kick Jubilee out of office is so high compared to their selfish ego. And anybody, again, wanting to ignore Kalonzo Musioka, saying that uh, he doesn't have a lot of numbers, about uh, one, that probably the maximum he could have is about 1.5 million from uh, the Kamba community, again, that would be very naive. Because when you go to the cost, when you go to cost, it's got a very good following of the Kamba community. When you go to Garissa, it's got a very good following. Part of the reason why Farah Mali Muhammad decided to join WIPA and not another political party. So I think really Msalem Mdavadi and uh, Ray Lodinga must babysit him because he looks like the guy who loses his school so fast and he can say, 
if I'm not going to be the flag bearer, then I may as well, uh, you know, clean up my hands and say that I've retired from politics. But it's a critical cog in their, in their win. All right. And the speech he gave yesterday was very solid. Uh, speaking of which, Jared, Jared, let's talk about Kalonzo Musioka. He has been speaking constantly about the fact that he has been making sacrifices, and it's time somebody made sacrifices for him. Um, how, how delicate is, is that situation? Well, thank you, Ben. Uh, I think I'm in agreement that Kalonzo Musioka has gone full political cycle. This is a guy who has sat on the most discomfort of names, from Watermelon to Fencita to Judas the Iscariot. I mean, he has seen it all and he has had it all. No one actually expected that he would enjoy this cold for this long, having been in power all through his life. And people predicted that he was a guy who could quickly grab a cabinet position offered to him by Uhuruto presidency. But he chose to stay put and champion the interest of the opposition from outside. You remember at the very beginning of the 2013 elections, there were talks on the streets to have him be nominated into the Senate so that he could champion opposition interests from within uh, the House. But, you know, he said he would want to play his cardinal responsibility as part of the opposition leadership from outside. So these are sacrifices that he has made. Uh, no one actually expected again that having gone through such a treacherous path uh, and a disappointing path in 2013, I mean in 2008, when he chose to join Kibaki's presidency, and, you know, pundits did say that had Kalonzo not joined uh, Kibaki in, um, in, in, in his government at the time when the tension was too high and there was violence all over, then Kibaki was actually going to resign within a foreseeable future. But because he then got a boost from, uh, you know, Kalonzo Musioka's uh, team, uh, he was able to a little bit sit pretty. Uh, in office. Of course, at the end of the day, we had a grand coalition government. So people again never thought and never foresaw a possibility of Raila Odinga, who actually won the election but was denied an opportunity, and that denial was given a boost by Kalonzo's entry into Kibaki's government, that this duo could work together as a team and even face the next round of election together. So people really uh, have been taken aback by certain actions uh, and decisions that have been lately uh, taken by Kalonzo Musioka. All right. He did say in Bomas yes. of Kenya two weeks ago mm -hmm. that he is ready to sacrifice one more time for the betterment of this nation. But it is good to ask, when will somebody come out to also sacrifice for Kalonzo Musioka? But I think these are fundamental issues that are being looked into in depth by the committee that has been created. And Kenyans are going to be a little patient. In under two months, right. an answer will be found, and the ticket under an answer will be uh, all, paraded all right. to you. the public. Thank okay. you, Jared. We have spoken about the four uh, presidential hopefuls in the National Super Alliance. Uh, let's now talk about two gentlemen who are also in the meeting yesterday, and that is, of course, the host, uh, Governor Isaac Ruto of the county of Bomet. And uh, Ali Hassan Joho, the governor of the county of Mombasa, both of them uh, uh, very vocal members of the Council of Governors and very, uh, whose political futures uh, you know, you know, seem very bright. Let's listen to what they had to say yesterday. Kule mimi natoka, mtu mwizi, tunamuita nini? Mwizi. Na mimi nataka niseme hapa bomet leo. Mchana na mnahi kabla mvue ije. Mimi Hassan Joho siwezi kutishwa na mtu nini? Mwizi. Mimi ndiyo ntatisha mwizi. Sinamna hiyo? Nataka ni waulize maswali mawili. Sabu mvue imefika hapa. Mimi nasikia ndugi zangu hapa wanatembea wakisama wanaleta miradi. Yale ambaye tumefanya utafiti. Tukaona kwamba miaka mitatu iliyopita Kujenga barabara ilikuwa beinusu ya mwaka huu. Ile kitu nauliza wana Rift Valley, wana Bomet. 
ile pesa ambaye William Samoe Ruto anachukua ajenge nyumba ya bilioni moja mulanana naye pale kwa hiyo nyumba Mwizi ni mwizi na mimi nataka niseme hapa kwa sababu William Ruto sahi yuko Mombasa na huko Mombasa anaongea mambo ya joho na mimi niko Bomet hapa naambia mwizi ni nini mwizi na mimi siezi tishwa na mwizi mimi ndio nitatisha nini mwizi county commissioner na police we require security we do not want to be interfered with by puppets ambao wanapanga na county commissioner anapanga county commissioner anapanga huko kwa junction eh? ujinga kabisa all right uh, let me let me start with you Jared and these are your final comments on the show this morning please take just uh, one minute only the two tough two tough talking governors Isaac Ruto and Ali Hassan Joho first of all what do you think about Ali Hassan Joho's constant uh, uh, you know uh, bashing of the deputy president William Ruto and the tug of war between the two of them and also what is the place of governor Isaac Ruto which way does it is uh, Chama Chamashinani go? Um, does he go it alone? Does, is, is, is joining NASA healthy for him? Well, Ben, uh, if you look uh, a, lit a little bit into the recent history, uh, both Governor Joho and Isaac Ruto have been uh, victims to some lashing by the Jubilee administration. Uh, of course, they have called both of them names. Uh, Governor Joho has been mistreated, in, up to and including his businesses at the coast. And therefore, you know, they cannot hold uh, what I would call kind words for uh, Uhuru Ruto's presidency. But I think from the look of things, uh, Governor Ruto has intimated that he's going to work very closely with NASA. I think it will be too late in the day for him to backtrack and recede and go back to work with Jubilee. Uh, having gone through uh, lots of uh, issues with that kind of administration, up to and including yesterday, you heard that he was mentioning his own county com uh, commissioner to be mobilizing people to mess up uh, with the rally. Uh, at some point, there was scaffolds. Uh, which were then thwarted by the uh, people aligned towards Governor Ruto. So all these, if indeed are true, then, you know, they are manifestations that Jubilee is still hell-bent on messing up uh, the governor, the Bomet governor. So I don't think he is in any position whatsoever to go back to work with Jubilee. The, the, the best part of it is that He's already a governor, and he has expressed his interest to defend that position. So he's not joining NASA in order to start negotiating for certain constitutional positions. He already has a job, a job that he's very, uh, very happy with, and he's discharging his mandate in, uh, according to the law. So what therefore remains for him, if he has certain friends who have been behind him, then just negotiate for jobs uh, for, for, for these friends. But this is not a person who is coming up with conditionalities that have to be made in order that he joins NASA. Now, Joho, uh, of course, has said that he will be running for president in 2022. On the other hand, you have Deputy President William Ruto, who is also going to run for president in 2022. So they have thought that, you know, you better start fighting your enemy right now, not wait until 2022. When the deputy president was in Mombasa yesterday and the day before, he made Joho the topic. So both of them have political rivalries that they have to square out as they head towards the next elections. Not the next elections, but the subsequent elections after next, which is 2022, Ben. And, and of course, we would like to uh, apologize. Uh, our calls to our studio lines are coming in thick and fast, but we are having a bit of a technical hitch with our lines, our telephone lines, and we have not been able to pick or take your calls. We do apologize for that. But gentlemen, this must. Uh, Governor Isaac Ruto, I mean, uh, what is his play? I mean, he wants to be governor. Can he be given governor if he joins NASA? Because Bomet, uh, let's, let, let's, uh, it is, is a jubilee zone. 
Um, actually, when you go to Bomet, uh, Jubilee is in the minority. When you go to the Bomet uh, County Assembly, Jubilee is in the minority. And you have uh, Chamacha Machinani, which is a special purpose vehicle created by Governor Ruto. So Governor Ruto is not trying to make anybody happy so that he can be given a ticket to go run again. If anything, there are so many people, including uh, an MP in Tutu, who have indicated that they are going to be running on his uh, party. But for the meeting yesterday, the reason why it's important is for two reasons. Number one, it was a reminder to the entire Kalenji nation that uh, even if you join NASA, there's one of our own who is going to be in that government who's got unlimited access to all these uh, principles. And understand when they landed in uh, Bomet, the first thing they did was to go to his house for breakfast. So that, that is a very good message to the people in uh, Rift Valley that don't be cheated that you need to be in government. There's one of your own who is likely to be in government. So that was a very strong message. Number two, he had a few governors campaign for him, and a number of them said that uh, at some stage, at the opportune time, we'll come and ask Laboso to come back home, because they say that, in fact, Laboso does not, uh, well, she comes from Bomet, but she's married elsewhere. So you saw Governor Jack Ranguma and Okoth Obado saying that he's going to get together a team of elders to come and uh, reclaim their daughter so that she can go maybe run in uh, Kisumu. Mm -hmm. So that was a powerful message. And then number three, Governor Isaac Ruto has been a rebel his entire life. He's a man that you don't step on his toes and expect to go without a fight. Right. That is why he's been able to, be, to take the Jubilee administration head on. And from the meeting yesterday, he indicated he has not taken a decision whether or not he's going to be supporting NASA or whether or not he's going to be supporting Jubilee. Because his big problem in Jubilee is actually William Ruto. So if uh, the president is able to mend fences with uh, Governor Isaac Ruto, he can uh, work for him, or rather he can work with him, because his only problem is uh, the, the deputy president. And you recall Senator Moy, as well as Governor Isaac Ruto, they've been telling President Kenyatta that we like you, we can even vote for you, but come and ask for these votes on your own. We don't want a political broker to come and tell you that I've got the entire Rift Valley and the do, 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 do Moi and, um, and Governor Ruto have the political capital to, to, to tell uh, President Uru Kenyatta you need to come to us without coming through William Ruto? Absolutely. When you look at, the, again, uh, the popularity rating so far, and if the popularity rating, rating is anything which can be transferred to actual votes, mm -hmm. for Bomet, Bomet is going to be in the column of Chama Chama Shinani. Okay. The probability of uh, Isaac Ruto winning right now is the fast approaching one. And then uh, Gideon Moy has got a uh, West Pokot under Key and Locke. Right. You even saw very close associates of uh, the deputy president, including uh, Pogisho, defecting to Kanu. So that's uh, a Kanu zone. And then uh, Gideon is trying to make sure that even Baringo is secure, as well as Elgeo Marraquez. And uh, in an election where you win by 50 plus 1, that one is very important because during the last election, the deputy president was able to secure the entire Rift Valley under URP. But right now you have uh, Gideon Moy and, and uh, Isaac Ruto chipping slowly. So even if they manage to chip only three counties, right. that will be a big dent. And I suspect Prof, yes. President Kenyatta, wherever he's seated, because he's got the benefit of intelligence reports on a daily basis, he's seated in a corner asking himself whether or not uh, the deputy president is actually a liability. All right. And Jared has indicated that uh, nobody knows the conversation between between Mamangina Kenyatta and retired President Moi, but I suspect Mamangina did not go to Kabarak just to have a cup of tea with uh, retired President Moi. All right, Moi. Prof. Yes. How much influence, if indeed Governor Isaac Ruto supports NASA, will he have on, you know, punching holes in what was in 2013 uh, a Jubilee stronghold? Actually, plenty. I want to start by saying this: if you look at the NASA arrangement, mm -hmm. there is, in terms of political seniority and the progress towards maturity. Yes. There is Raila Odinga, who is basically over matured. Then there is the <laughs> Kalonzo Musioka uh, Musali Mudavadi. Then there is the group, and there is, of course, we're tying that group. Then there is this group of Governor Ruto and uh, Governor Joho. Mm -hmm. That is the next layer or to be able... You see, if you look at the three layers, there's a group that is dealing with the strategy, mm -hmm. there's a group that is dealing with tactics, right. and the Ruto and the Joho are at the operational level. Okay. Their job is to charismatically right. mobilize the people. All right, thank you. And on that bombshell, that biochemical <laughs> Anal approach, <laughs> analysis of political uh, <laughs> happenings this past weekend. That's where we leave it. On the broadcast this morning, you have been watching Sunday edition, Kenya's premiere, and only Sunday morning political show. Be sure to join us every Sunday morning between 10 a.m. and 12 noon. I'm Ben Kitili. Bye for now.